Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to take a look at how the Fourier transform is used in digital signal processing by looking at its simpler discrete implementation in Python. This video assumes that you are already familiar with how the Fourier transform works and what this equation tries to tell us. So, if you are not sure what each term here means, please make sure to watch my video about the Fourier transform first, since what I am going to explain will probably make less sense otherwise. To start with, let's create a simple signal by adding three simple periodic signals. All signals will have a sample rate of 100 samples per second and will use a time interval of one second. The first signal will have a frequency of one and an amplitude of three. The second signal will have a frequency of three and an amplitude of 1.5. And the final signal will have a frequency of six and an amplitude of one. And by adding them, we obtain the following signal. We will not add any phase information in this example to keep things simple. All well and good. Now let's try to extract this information using our own implementation of discrete Fourier transform. The first thing we have to do is to understand the DFT equation, which is quite similar to the original Fourier transform, but with an important distinction. It works on a discrete space instead of a continuous space. Thus, to extract the amplitude and phase for a specific frequency k, we replace the integral with a sum over the samples within our input signal and divide each sample with the corresponding complex number of that frequency as we did in the original Fourier transform. And that's basically it. Now let's try to implement the discrete Fourier transform in Python. First of all, we compute the uppercase n, which is the length of our signal, and declare the variable uppercase x which will hold all the frequency information within our signal. Then we iterate through all the possible frequencies in our signal, which are lower than the number of samples n. Actually, the maximum frequency is equal to n over 2, but more on this a little bit later, and store the current frequency information in xk. Then we iterate through all the samples within our input signal, and extract the amplitude and phase of frequency k by dividing each sample with the complex number corresponding to frequency k, adding this information to xk. Thus, after this loop is finished and summed everything up, we have managed to successfully extract the amplitude and phase information for the frequency k. So we append it to our final output. And now, if we were to plot what we have obtained so far, we'd get the following. Ok, so it looks like we've got three frequencies in our signal, around where we expect them to be, at the beginning of the spectrum. But how about the other three frequencies at the end of the spectrum? Well, we can see from here that the output of the DFT is symmetric at half of the sampling rate, which is known as the Nyquist frequency, or the folding frequency, named after the electronic engineer Harry Nyquist. He and Claude Shannon have the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem, which states that a signal sampled at a rate can be fully reconstructed if it contains only frequencies components below half the sampling frequency. Thus, the highest frequency output from the discrete Fourier transform is half the sampling rate of our input signal. And if we were to plot only the first half of the spectrum, we would get the following results, where we can observe clearly that indeed they correspond to what we put in the original signal. We have three frequencies at 1, 3, and 6 Hz with an amplitude of 3, 1.5, and 1. Finally, the signal can be easily reconstructed using the inverse discrete Fourier transform, and here's how you do it in Python. Firstly, you extract the length of the spectrum and declare the lowercase x variable which will contain the reconstructed signal samples. Then we try to reconstruct each sample within the signal by iterating through the frequency spectrum generating the corresponding complex number for the frequency k, multiplying it with the corresponding complex number created by the discrete Fourier transform for the frequency k, and adding the result. Once this loop ends, we have obtained the end sample of our input signal. And that's basically how you compute the discrete Fourier transform for a digital signal. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm Share your thoughts about DFT in the comments below and subscribe to be up to date with the content I create on this channel. See you next time. Bye bye.